Hi guys, in this video I want to show you the whole process of making my new Heaven release and I will do it in an accelerated mode <laughs> because the video is very long, it took me six long days so I decided to split this video into two parts also besides the accelerated mode. So today you're watching part one that I called meshing and first stage for me is always to draw a, an outfit template in ZBrush using masking. I don't, um, I don't work in Marvelous Designer for that purpose uh, because first <laughs> I hate Marvelous Designer. Um, I don't know why, maybe, maybe I'm not very experienced in Marvelous Designer or something else, <laughs> you might say that probably Marvelous Designer is very slow because not every computer, not every PC can handle it, but I have quite new, quite, I don't know, up-to-date computer and um, that's not it. <laughs> I, I know a thing or two in Marvelous Designer, but but that's not just the program for me. Um, that's why I use um, ZBrush. And um, for drawing, I use my Wacom Cintiq 13 HD tablet. And of course, often in my work, I rely on the reference that I usually find on Pinterest. Because um, making things um, using your own imagination is very nice very good and kudos <laughs> to those who can do that <laughs> but um, when you're learning and I think I still am <laughs> uh, it is better to try um, I don't know if copy is the right word but um, let's say okay copy it's it's best when you're learning uh, to copy something that already exists because that way um, you gain much more experience and later when you are good <laughs> in that you can create things um, using your own imagination. I'm not going to say much in this video because it's too long obviously and there are so many things I do it simply feels impossible to explain everything in 20 minutes so I will just briefly explain all the steps I take here and show you how I basically make all my laundry projects so after I paint the base of the lingerie with a mask I make an extrude or extrusion of a thin mesh uh, extruding uh, thin mesh is important because later I usually remesh everything using zero mesher until I have a decent topology. Then I import all the parts of the underwear into Blender and start to edit the topology in places where it turned out to be incorrect or doesn't look look good because of zero measure and also I remove extra polygons in places where uh, you know I will add all sorts of metal things such as rings, ties and so on. I'm not very good at lingerie term terminology so I'm very sorry for that. <laughs> also I use sculpting for smoothing over topology and places where lines are curvy or ugly and all that. So when I was working in Blender, for your convenience, I hope I turned on screencast keys at dawn so that you can see which buttons I press because I use hotkeys very often. At this point, I'm starting to extrude the edges to work on the places where the fabric folds over to hold the metal elements like rings in this case. Also, I created a modifier called Solidify to add thickness to my mesh, but I don't apply it yet. I will do that after I finish with all the pieces. Then I create a simple low poly ring and um, 
then you'll see this later other metallic parts and place them to their places. <laughs> Another perk of not applying solidify modifier yet is that it allows you to smooth polygons as basically you're still working with a thin mesh, you know what I mean? If you have a thick mesh, you also smooth the thickness of that mesh. And if you have a thin mesh, you smooth only polygons. In general, then I continue to do the same thing until I put all the rings in their places and all the metal th things in their places. That is kind of a routine job, as you may say. Here I added this thingy, <laughs> I don't know unfortunately how it's called, uh, but um, I tried to reduce polygon size here as much as I could, I mean on this particular release, because it has so many tiny details, also I planned to add here um, a chain, mesh chain that uh, I know for sure <laughs> uh, it will be very high poly uh, for second life and we try here to make our second life experience more optimized and I don't know we don't want our avatar uh, being very you know I don't remember difficulty of the avatar to be very high we don't want that so to place this thingy and to 
added somehow these um, straps of the panties, I used sculpting tool and also I added some additional polygons so that uh, sculpting would not um, rip my polygons and make uh, topology very, you know, I don't know, crunchy or something. Uh, if you ask me where I got this bow, uh, I bought it from ArtStation. I don't really... I'm sorry for that <laughs> again, but I don't remember where I tried to find it because I don't know. And if I find it, I will um, share the link uh, in the description down below. One eternity later.
you may ask me, why don't you use mirroring option? <laughs> because that is so easy. You can, you know, finish modeling one side of a of a mesh and then mirror it to the other side and you don't need to do the same thing all over again to both sides <laughs> and I will answer to you because I usually forget <laughs> about this option and I remembered it uh, about it um, only when I started to make bra <laughs> and that was the last thing I made <laughs> so a uh, panties and harness I made both sides left and right um, manually from scratch <laughs> trying to make things identical and you know sometimes mirroring is not so good because um, when left and right side are slightly different from each other it makes uh, you think that um, it looks kind of more realistic you know <laughs> but anyway yeah I agree that mirroring is a very very useful thing useful tool and if you can use it <laughs> I didn't include into this video how I made feathers because I made them after all my textures were ready because I established for myself uh, how I'm gonna be making these feathers and this proce process is similar to the one how uh, hair creators create hair, <laughs> if you don't know what I mean. Um, so I will show it uh, in the next part where I will be cre not creating well where I will be making textures in Substance Painter and I will also exclude from there how I did UVs because it is it is you know this process is not for an accelerated video because it's not that interesting and uh, I don't see how it will be useful for any of you. So I think it will be better if I will make a video on how to do UVs in Blender, because I do it in Blender, and I will just explain it in words without any acceleration of the video. Uh, so I already have the, this kind of video, but I need to make an audio for it, voiceover, so to speak. So. Also, I remember that I promised to you to show how I do coloring in Photoshop and this video is almost done. 
I also need to make a voiceover for it and uh, I don't know, I think it will be published after part two of this video. Also, let me know, <laughs> I know we have lots of plans already <laughs> for the videos, but let me know what else you want to know. I don't know, maybe I can answer to you in the comments down below. And um, yeah, share some video ideas with me and I'll see what I can do.